Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Bit of a long time since I've uploaded a video, but I'm doing a little bit of a mini project at home with some leftover hardware from the office. And I really wanted a new router, so I thought I'd check out OpenSense. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube about this project. Overall, the hardware requirements are pretty minimal, so, you know, it runs on anything really x86 architecture probably even some others but yeah i've got a bunch of these lenovo m070q uh, tiny pcs and i jumped on aliexpress and tried to track down some intel network adapters because these little machines have a space where you can fit a second nick obviously you have to take a few things out to get to that second space but um, yeah, overall, yeah, these machines are easy to work on, they're plentiful, I've got a bunch of them lying around at work, they're pretty much just an i5 7th generation Intel CPU, 8GB of RAM, 256GB SSD, um, all pretty standard stuff, so, you know, in terms of business machines, these are getting a little bit long in the tooth, of course they don't natively run Windows 11, um, things like that. So yeah, as I said at work, we're upgrading a bunch of computers. So I've got heaps of these things lying around and I figured uh, why not spend, you know, 20 odd dollars and uh, try and put a new lease of life on them. Overall, this procedure is pretty easy to do. As I said, this is an Intel based uh, platform. So um, OpenSense should run pretty good on it. I believe OpenSense is based on BSD. Uh, so yeah, Linux distribution. Um, so to fit the additional uh, network card I do need to remove this Intel Wi-Fi adapter, thankfully not soldered to the motherboard. So other than me fighting the camera angles it came out pretty easy. Now the adapter that you are seeing in this video is not the one I ended up using which I'll go into sort of more detail later but the process for the replacement card that I did end up ordering um, is the same. Pretty much Wi-Fi card comes out, the antennas and things like that, and that makes room for the new M.2 sort of style uh, external NIC. The machine does have one onboard uh, 10, 100 gigabit, sorry, normal, you know, one gig duplex. Uh, Intel network adapter which I ended up using for my ONT ONT connection and the replacement card that I didn't end up using and well I do end up using sorry but this one you see here which I didn't uh, is two and a half gig uh, gigabit but sadly I don't have any network switches that are two and a half gigabit uh, capable so that's kind of future expandability really and I figured I'd put that on the LAN side in case, you know, as I said, I do get switches that can, you know, drive that and then I can do more routing and fancy features and things like that. So yeah, pretty easy. Uh, so far all you really need is a couple of Phillips screwdrivers. Uh, so I'm going to remove the HDMI port from this machine, which is thankfully just a plug-in adapter. A lot of these machines you can option like a dis extra display port. Uh, serial, maybe even VGA, um, I believe there was, maybe, I have seen references somewhere uh, to these extra NICs, um, but yeah, I went AliExpress route. There are heaps of Realtek ones which supposedly work alright now, but I really just thought I'd stick with Intel, um, because I know that those chipsets generally um, give you less fuss, um, or so I thought. Um, the one I'm fitting here, I, ha I think they had an issue flashing the firmware to this because it wouldn't uh, pixie boot either, it would complain about like the ROM image not being correct. And it had an, a very strange MAC address, I think it was like mostly zeros, um, yeah, not good. Anyway, unbeknownst to me. Uh, at the time so I'm just gonna carry on I'm gonna wrap up the connector just because those contacts are a bit too exposed to the shell of the um, surrounding components so you know they're they're grounded so if this was to touch it probably short so 
just a bit of extra precaution electrical tape. With the tape sort of on there, um, it was a little bit fiddly to get this sort of into place, but um, I managed to get there it's just using the same two screws that I used. Well, I took it on the HDMI uh, connector here, so once again, just threading those back in, reusing them. And um, but yeah, I'm really happy with the uh, fit and finish of these little adapters. They fit really well into these little spaces. I didn't have to Dremel anything. I didn't cut anything out. Um, granted you do lose your Wi-Fi, but I mean this particular application where it's acting as a router, I really don't want that. Um, I've got a bunch of, well, a bunch of two Ubiquiti APs in the house, um, each end of the house, and so yeah, this doesn't need to do any Wi-Fi uh, stuff, it just needs in and out pretty much, LAN, WAN, WAM, BAM, and DUM, yeah. As I said, fit and finish is really good. It's like it was made for it, really. As I said, pretty easy install. This was actually one of the easiest parts of the build. Just a couple of screws, as I said, and you're in. These machines are made to be serviced. Great news is I have a bunch uh, spare if this one was ever to die. So, you know, it's pretty low risk, I guess. Um, so going through the install of OpenSense, it is based on BSD. Uh, it's pretty standard and easy to install. Uh, the only thing I had a little bit of trouble with was picking a file system to install. I can't remember what I chose, if it was UFS or ZFS, one of the two. One's more simple, apparently, than the other. Um, I did do the swap file, even though I do have 8 gigabytes of RAM. And this is where I came into issues. You'll see here that I'm not detecting any interfaces with the adapter that I had fitted. It only detected the onboard LAN. And that's um, where the this adapter here, um, this is the one I originally bought, this is the one that didn't work. It does work in Windows, but not in this um, release of OpenSense. I have seen issues with BSD having problems with some of these oddball ROM flashed um, network adapters. I mean, it is should be a genuine Intel NIC, but... Uh, I honestly don't know um, what was done with it. So I ended up going for this one after a lot of research. And these are not that common, but they work really well. They're not too expensive and they do come in a, a variety of sizes. And it uses the i225V uh, revision of that chipset. And it does actually work really well. Uh, I've been running the router for a little over a month and a half and haven't had any packet loss or anything weird. This is the test setup and I've got a GoPro strapped to my chest so we can sort of do the second half of the build really which is for a couple of years this is how my network cupboard has looked in the house. Now this house is a, not a house I own, I just rent it so I can't really build a network cabinet and stuff like that so I'm kind of limited on what I can do but uh, I figured why not uh, build like a little bracket mounting system to hold the PC and you know just try and tidy up uh, some of the cabling and things in here so yeah this is my initial test after a couple of weeks 
just to make sure that the PC worked and didn't get too hot, uh, things like that. So yeah, gonna do a little bit of a build, physical build here, and by no means I'm not skilled at this, and I really do hate these network cabinet sort of boxes that most houses seem to come with. They're either not deep enough, the plugs are never in the right place, there's never enough of the plugs, the um, patch panels always crap, um, the metal's flimsy, there's never enough room to put a decent switch in. Um, but I did manage to, I managed to make it work here, but I, I work with these a lot at my new job, and um, yeah, they're a pain in the butt. So I figured I'd try and get a bit fancy, there's no room for a UPS in here, um, but I figured I'd try and do something with power, you know, put a couple of these sort of splitters and things in. Um, thankfully the stuff I'm running is really, doesn't draw a lot of power, so it's not like I'm going to cook anything, but um, yeah, just trying to find a good ways to keep everything tidy and mounted. So I'd been down to the local hardware store and picked up some metal tapping screws here, sheet metal screws. Um, I ended up having to, you know, make some pilot holes of course because I tried to just screw them in, it didn't work, which you'll see. And I got myself some of these brackets as well. Uh, sadly the U brackets that I wanted didn't really exist so I had to put two L brackets uh, together with a, bol a bolt in the middle. So. Uh, not ideal, but to be honest, it's it's what I had to work with uh, locally in my town. Um, Queenstown oddly has issues sometimes with supplies. Um, there's no hard, you know, IT store, for instance, where you can pick up a hard drive or you know, like various, like I needed a power supply for a machine. I have to order all of that in out of town, so yeah, really annoying. But I stole my flatmate's drill. Um, which helped a lot with the screws so yeah easy enough once I had those done to kind of bolt everything together of course it wasn't quite straight um, the drill walked around a lot I don't have uh, like a punch you know to make a like a pilot hole punch for the for the drill bit so yeah definitely walked around a, a fair bit but yeah other than that, I was actually pretty happy with the clamps. I wanted to make it high enough where you could get to the plugs to plug things in, and I will be honest, I actually kind of forgot to measure that, so it was rather close. Um, but more importantly, I just wanted airflow at the front. Uh, well, what you're looking at is the bottom, it will be the front of the computer to the rear, so it can exhaust. Um, draw in, air in from the bottom and push it out to the top, you know, just to keep that airflow for the CPU. It's not really, well, it's not summertime here in New Zealand, so I have no idea how hot this is going to get. Uh, currently, it's, you know, pretty standard operating temperature, which you guys will see soon once I have the system loaded back up. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure there was some sort of airflow. I'm pretty happy with the mounting of the computer. Um, yeah, as I said, heaps of room at the front for the fans to exhaust and things like that. And you can get to all the plugs and cables on the back side. And I learned that if I loosen up the screw and nut that I have, it makes this bracket a lot more uh, bendable. Well, not bendable, but maneuverable so I can actually get the computer in and out so I can have the first half of the L bracket secured to the backing of the um, comms box here and then the other half flops around uh, enough to sneak the computer part so you can see here 
see how it's loose I can pull the machine out like that making it easy to service so at this moment it's really just the boring cable management stuff I didn't actually film a lot of this because it took forever to kind of route things keep things secure um, I did actually quickly mount the little switch I've got the crappy TP link sadly it's not a POE switch but uh, it fits fine in the box but you know I wonder I'd like to have some maybe ubiquity gear or something in here but you know for now it's good as gold and I relocated my POE injectors uh, internally in the house just because I've got room for them in the house but frees up a little bit of extra room in the comms box here keeps it looking a little more tidy and a few less plugs as well just really helps out so we're going to slip the machine down here uh, this is the cable going from the blue ones going from the ONT uh, to the one gigabit um, onboard nick on the machine and then the red cable is the two and a half gig link which is going to the switch which is feeding the switch in the room that I'm currently doing my work in two access points in the house and a TV I believe um, yeah it's pretty easy stuff really nothing too fancy but I like the fact that it's it's easy to get to and easy to service the other thing which I didn't show um, is I set up the PC to auto start when the power is restored so if there's a power cut um, everything will just turn back on when the power is restored as I said the there is no UPS but I do have a crap ton of these machines and power supplies um, the only thing I don't have is that note so here is the setup main page of OpenSense it's pretty easy to read I, I like how simple it is it tells you all your stats you know you've got your uptime on the left there the version uh, the system you're running how you know how many days it's been up for when it lasted configuration changes you got your graphs for your your WAN and LAN interfaces uh, if you've got some VPN stuff set up which I've had kind of a mixed bag with temperatures things like that um, yeah I'm not going to go over the setup of this because it's quite vast and it does do quite a lot of stuff I'm primarily using this just for the router aspect and VPN portal um, I do have the AdGuard DNS service uh, installed on this as well which I have noticed the DNS response time is a little bit slower the other cool thing is it does do config backups to Google Drive which you can set up as well as download the config locally so my plan is to have a spare whole machine here the same config as what you've seen and then if this machine was to ever die I just literally just plug it in uh, and away it goes I did have some extra plugins and things installed for, as I said for the ad block um, well you know the ad block DNS service some um, other little bits and pieces I haven't gone nuts to be honest it kept it pretty easy uh, but yeah overall as I said it's been running for about a month and a half um, I haven't had any issues with it it's been quite reliable and I like the fact that it's um, you know a lot nicer to work with than the home standard ISP router that you get um, it's just got more options you can turn on you know VPN service and stuff I have seen people run this on a virtual server but I'm going bare metal but anyway that's it for now and as I said a nice little quick project and yeah had a lot of fun building it alright everyone uh, reuse those old machines have a bit of fun and um, yeah give it a shot if you're if you're interested alright bye for now